Did you know that you can have a different ancestry from your sibling? Whoa. So Emma, guess what I got for Christmas? What? 23 of me kid. Ooh, did you get the health or just the ancestry? Both the health and ancestry. Awesome. Yeah. So what are you most looking forward to finding out about? Um, definitely the ancestry. I mean, I know my family is from Sicily, but we have other sprinklings in Europe, so it'll be fun to see what that is. Did you know that you can have a different ancestry from your sibling? Whoa. I didn't realize that until I took the test and kind of started going more into the genetics behind it, but you can have a completely different ancestry from your sibling. That's crazy. My sisters didn't even get the hit because they were like, what's the point? <laughs> People expect that they're a 50-50 split between their mom and their dad. Right, that makes sense. I mean, we all know we have 46 chromosomes, 23 mm -hmm. come from the mom, 23 come from the dad. Right, but actually, you can end up being 25% your mom, 75% your dad, 40-60, 90-10. All right, where are you getting these numbers? <laughs> <laughs> if we think about chromosomes, so you mentioned that there's, we have 46 chromosomes right. and 23 supposedly come from mom, 23 supposedly come from dad, or that's the way we've been brought up to think. Imagine that your mom, her chromosomes are represented by purple beads, okay. which are a mixture of blue and red beads, which would be from your grandparents. And then your dad's chromosomes are represented by a green bead, okay. which is represented which is the blue and yellow from his parents. When you are being made and you need to get your 46 chromosomes, you have to get one from mom and one from dad to make up each of those chromosome pairs because we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. I don't understand if you're getting all these 23 chromosomes from your mom, aren't her chromosomes all the same? Like all the chromosomes in her body are basically identical. Mm -hmm. So how could you how could they be different? That all goes into how she inherited her chromosomes from her parents. Okay. So what happens when the sperm and the egg, when they're being made, so say her grandma, when her when that egg is being made, um, the chromosomes will all line up, her mom's chromosomes will all line up, and they'll do what we call recombination. So they'll kind of swap different pieces so that you don't, so that you get some genetic diversity. Okay. And this genetic diversity is useful because it can allow you to maybe adapt better to the environment, um, metabolize food more quickly. It's really useful for animals who have to survive based on the environment. For humans, it's not as, not as useful. But this recombination makes everyone very different. So if you think about, so for my mom, she had my sister and me 10 years apart. So when the egg, when the egg that became me, when it was being made, mm -hmm. her, my mom's chromosomes lined up, they swapped different pieces. So one of the chromosomes could have a, the top part could be from my grandpa, the middle part could be from my grandma, and the bottom part could be from my grandpa, because that was what my mom had to work with for the genetic information. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you think 10 years later, when my sister's egg is being formed, those chromosomes are lining up again, but they may swap completely differently. Right. So the end result is that I can look totally different from my sister just because of how the chromosomes line and swap. And it's totally random what happens. It's not, there's nothing you can do to predict it. Some chromosome pieces will be, will be more likely to go along with other chromosome pieces. That's what we call a linked um, gene, where it's linked to another gene and it's inherited together. But a lot of times for combination, it can happen so many different spots on the chromosome. So your chromosomes are just a mosaic of information from your grandparents on both so sides. there's no place of the chromosome that's more likely to break than others? There are some places where it would break more. We call at the end of the chromosomes is more likely to break mm. just because where the chromosomes come together, because if you think of a chromosome, it's kind of like an X and there's this little thing in the middle called the centromere. And at the centromere, the chromosome does not want to break because sometimes you can end up breaking at, like right in between the centromere and having issues with the chromosomes lining up. The bottom line is the, let's take chromosome six, for example, that you get from your mom does not look like all of her chromosome six. It's completely different because it's been all mixed up. Right, exactly. Okay. So, and that's the really cool thing if you think about just ancestry and the fact that it can change so much. So we're going to kind of use a graphic to explain this and hopefully it will make a little more sense. So imagine that my 
maternal grandfather, he's represented as a blue square, and my maternal grandmother is represented as a yellow circle. And on my dad's side, my paternal grandfather is represented as a green square, and my paternal grandmother is represented as a pink circle. But my mom would be a mixture of the blue and the yellow, and my dad would be a mixture of the green and the pink. If you think about the next generation, which would be my siblings, well, my one sibling and me, there are lots of different things that could happen. I could either be half blue, half pink. I could be half green, half yellow. I could be a mixture of all four. That just shows you with the ancestry, if you think about those different colors as being either French or German or English or Scottish, that can really depend, like it can change your ancestry and how you look just based on those features that you're inheriting. For simplicity's sake, we'll look at my grandparents as being 100% of certain ancestry. So we'll say my mom's father, he's 100% Scottish. My mom's mother is 100% English. My dad's dad is 100% French and my dad's mom is 100% German. This is not the case. No one's really 100% of anything. It's pretty rare. But so then if you go to the next generation, so my parents, that would mean my mom is 50% Scottish, 50% English, and that would mean my dad is 50% French, 50% German. So if you look at the possibilities of the ancestries of their children, one child could be 50% Scottish, 50% French. Another child could be 50% Scottish, 50% German. Another child could be 50% English, 50% French. And then even another 50% English, 50% German. And you could even have the possibility where one child is 25% Scottish, 25% English, 25% French, 25% German. So that's just one example to show you that your siblings can have completely different ancestry from you. Right, it just depends where that break is happening. Mm -hmm. You can almost have any percentage, right? Yeah, yeah, you really could. So that's why you hear family say, oh, well, so-and-so looks like the Italian side, yeah. or the other one looks like the German side. So it's all, it's all the genetics and the, just the probability. So it's really cool with these kits that you can go and predict and see what your ancestry is. And there's really no way you can know unless you do some genetic something. Right.